Warning. Censorship. Warning. Censorship. I'm shaking right now, but it's not because I'm scared. It's not because I'm nervous. It's because I'm friggin' livid. I am absolutely boiling inside that it actually got this far where the the government, my government that I voted for, is is willing to persecute me for something like this. It just, it's unbelievable. The problem that I feel is happening here is uh, that the bureaucrats and uh, the uh, some of the elected ones, obviously you can tell that with the Snowbirds uh, debacle, uh, think that they're above a regular Albertans. And, and the regular Albertans are, they're not asking for a lot, they're not... Uh, they're not officious. Uh, they've been highly respectful of this whole pandemic requirements uh, to this date. But now people are starting to uh, see the weaknesses in uh, the uh, effective, affecting the regulations going forward. And uh, it's, it's deeply frustrating. What if you end up with contempt of court today? What happens? Well, then I have to go before a judge and he's going to ask me why, uh, why he shouldn't hold me in contempt of court. I'll plead my case and let him decide. Are you willing to go to jail? Absolutely. Sheila Gunn Reed for Rebel News here in Mirror, Alberta. Today is the day Alberta Health Services and the Alberta government attempt to drop the hammer on Chris Scott. He's the renegade owner of the Whistle Stop Cafe right behind me here in Mirror, Alberta, a town of just 500 people. You see, for two weeks now, Chris has been opening his little restaurant in defiance of the lockdown restrictions on dine-in services here in Alberta. It's been an act of civil disobedience, but it's been so much more. It's also an act of economic survival that has inspired restaurants from all across the province to do the same, to open their doors too. Now, Chris Scott has had repeated visits from Alberta Health Services demanding that he close, and he's been under constant surveillance by the local RCMP detachment who say they're gathering evidence on behalf of Alberta Health Services. Chris Scott has even been served with a notice to appear in April in Stetler Provincial Court for breaking the order of the public health officer to close his restaurant. But the community has continued to rally around Chris Scott and Albertans from all across the province, as well as people from all across the world, have continued to show support for Chris and what he's doing. But then on Monday, so just 48 hours ago, Chris was served with a notice to appear in Red Deer Court via WebEx because now Alberta Health Services is seeking an immediate court order to close his restaurant, which will mean that if Chris Scott remains open, he could be in contempt of court. That's a criminal offense. And so a bench warrant could be issued for Chris's arrest for the crime of making a living. Rebel News has a lawyer working with Chris Scott, and we know a lawyer's job is to keep the client out of jail. Restaurants are set to reopen on the 8th of February, so just five days away. I don't know what's going to happen here today, and I wouldn't want to be in Chris's shoes. And shame on Alberta's allegedly conservative health minister, Tyler Shandro, for letting it get this far. Alberta Health Services is seeking to imprison a restaurant owner in small town Alberta when the relaunch date is just five days away. It's a despicable act and the Alberta Health bureaucracy should be gutted and the earth should be salted where everything once stood. My colleague Kian Vexty is in Red Deer today at the courthouse where supporters will be gathering to support Chris Scott and the Whistle Stop. The same is happening here in Mirror today. It's a quarter past nine right now. It's beyond minus 25. Court is at 10. I'm going to go into the Whistle Stop now, grab a coffee and take the temperature of the room. What if you end up with contempt of court today? What happens? Well, then I have to go before a judge and he's going to ask me why, uh, why he shouldn't hold me in contempt of court. I'll plead my case and let him decide. Are you willing to go to jail? Absolutely. So court is momentarily for Chris. Um, are you as nervous as I am? I am nervous. I am nervous because when you stand for truth, it's a little tough sometimes, but I know that we have the people of Alberta and all over Canada supporting us, so in that I feel confident. I think it's a safe bet to say that you're like me, you don't think anybody should go to jail for the crime of just trying to earn an honest living. Do you have a message for 
Alberta Health Services because they're the ones who are really yes. pushing for this. Yes, I do. So my thing is, in a small restaurant business, we can control the way we sanitize, the way we clean. We can control the amount of people that come in. It's a great, safe place. Why can Walmart, Costco, and the other big co corporations be open? You can't control this. So my thing is, is we can, but those places can't. I want that answer today. Can I ask you guys why you came to the Whistle Stop today? Uh, to support Chris in his fight to reopen businesses. Stand up for our children's future, really. Yeah, I guess we come to support him, and uh, he shouldn't be going to jail. Nobody should be going to jail trying to make a living in this country, especially in Alberta. We've been fighting, trying to get gas and oil going, and uh, everything seems to be criminal that everybody does nowadays. So, yeah, we're here to support him. He won't be going to jail. We'll get him out if he does. I just wanted to come out and um, just show my support, um, be another person, um, just to push back against what the government's doing. He has the potential of jail time today if they find him in contempt of court. Do you think that the government should be locking up restaurant owners who are just trying to survive? Are they locking up the Costco workers and the Walmart owners? That's, that's it. Yeah, no, no, they should not be. It's not right. I don't, I don't know why the big box stores are exempt from all the rules that the small business owners are being penalized for. It makes no sense and it's not fair. It's unfortunate we've, we've come this far, really. Um, he's just a restaurant owner, um, you know, trying to uh, feed the people here and it's not like people are forced to come here right it's uh people just want to come out here and eat something and the fact that they're that he might go to jail it's uh it's beyond me <laughs> really do you have a message for the i guess the health minister he's the guy in charge of ahs that's dragging chris to court today i totally agree and what i'm going to say to ahs it's time to get over your power struggle and start getting on with life a little bit. Out in these communities, we do not have the issues that they may have in the big cities, but let's get our economy back rolling and enough of this nonsense. Followed right on to JT Trudeau. But he has a purpose to stay open. He's got a family to feed and a business to keep open. And I, you know, I'm, I'm well, I'm okay. You know, where we're at, I'm fine. But I'm thinking some of the people that are uh, making all our decisions, why aren't we hearing all of the decisions that are made, all the tests that are being done. We don't hear that. We just hear the one side, and I think it's uh, so unfair. So I'm here supporting Chris. I'm a little ways away from here, but hang in there, guy. I said, uh, we need more people with balls your size to keep this country going. I'm telling you that. Why'd you come down to the whistle stop today? To support, uh, to support local business. I wish more of us had uh, the strength he's got. I don't think I would in his case, so willing to support him however I can. Former resident of Mirror, so um, my heart kind of is here, but more than that, I just um, was really just understanding that a lot of people are disappointed and really frustrated because the government is really bullying people, and I want Chris to be able to stand and know that we're with him, and a lot of people feel the same. We don't think what's happening is right, and we want to have a voice. Well, I came down to support them because they are fighting freedom on our behalf, so... I think we um, voted the NDP out last time, but it doesn't seem like we have at this moment. I guess you're here supporting Chris because he's doing this for everybody. He's helping all of us. Everybody's got to help everybody. Our, our town's got to support each other. We think what he's doing is really great, and um, <laughs> he's the type of person that that's going to give a lot of people courage to do the same thing. I see somebody that is actually standing up for humanity, not just his business, not just his profits. And if you'll notice on my sign, there's two things missing, politics and profit. Because that is not what this is about. This is about our people, our humanity, and our world. And Chris has touched people around the world because he's been willing to stand up and say, this is about everybody. This isn't just about my business. So I'm proud of that. They have no right to shut all these country people down like uh, I believe all the most of their problems are in the city and uh, to jeopardize somebody's livelihood like this I uh, I'm a firm believer in it's all a farce 
I believe that people should be able to uh, run their small business and like the government can't give freedom it can only take it away and I'm done with them taking it away we would like we would like our lives back Carlos from the Noble Fox you're here at the whistle stop are you as nervous as I am for Chris oh yeah um, we'll see we'll come here to support him and wish him luck uh, that's pretty much what we have <laughs> he ends up with contempt of court today. He could go to jail. Do you think the government should be ruining his life for the five days between now and when restaurants can legally open? Not at all. Uh, I just see. I don't see why they're fast forwarding this. He had a set date already, and now they want to do it before the set date. So all I know is just bullying, bullying, and bullying. That's all they're doing. And you're staying open, but I hear that you're closed today so that you can be here. Yes. Yeah, we're gonna stay open and see what happens. Uh, maybe uh, they can warm me up a bed in his cell if he goes to jail. So I just thought I would give a quick little update about the progress here at the Whistle Stop. The restaurant is packed. The parking lot had about 50 or 60 people here. More people than that were waiting in their vehicles because it is like minus 25 and windy. Don't let the sun <laughs> fool you. But we just heard word from the lawyer that Chris's court appearance has been pushed off until the end of the day so some people have headed home more people will come back later I'm gonna camp out all day the way I normally do at the whistle stop have some coffee have a bite to eat get some of my other work done and just keep checking in and talking to people about why they have come out here to little small town mirror Alberta to support Chris Scott as he fights for economic survival and entrepreneurial freedom. Chris, I want to ask you really quick. Um, so you got an update from the lawyer and they said that your hearing has been put till the end of the day. Um, what do you think's going on? Uh, I think there's a lot of noise outside the courthouse right now and it might be difficult to, to uh, get anything done. But it's just my guess. I wonder if we're in a bit of a staring contest with Alberta Health Services. Do you think they're getting shaky? Because you don't seem to be shaky, even in the slightest. I, I really don't feel like I have anything to be shaky about. Um, Dr. Hinshaw said that we can't let the actions of the minority dictate what the majority does. And uh, honestly, the things they say, I don't even know if they can hear the words coming out of their own mouths. The majority of Alberta is speaking and they're speaking loud. Um, Canada is starting to speak and back us up. And it's like it's falling on deaf ears. I, I don't I don't understand why why we're why we're still continuing along this path. We should have had, we, it should have been resolved days ago. So, no, I'm not I'm not shaken or nervous at all. Now, I sort of eavesdropped on a little bit of a pep talk that you were giving to Chris. Can you give us a Coles Notes version of it since you did yourself spend some time in the Crowbar Hotel fighting for freedom? Well, I, I guess, uh, and I don't mean this in an arrogant fashion, Sheila, but uh, I, I, I like to think that I was uh, probably, if not the only MLA in the Alberta legislature who was able to go to jail before I got elected. Uh, there are some there who will probably go to jail after they've been elected. Uh, the point, uh, what I want to talk about, Sheila, is that uh, this issue is about, uh, to uh, a previous interview that I did today, it's about Henry and Martha. Ralph Klein used to talk about Henry and Martha. And they're the regular Albertans. Just like the fabric of the people that I see in this restaurant here today, they're average everyday wage earners, just like I now consider myself to be as a, as a farmer. And they are regular people. And that's the, the, the problem that I feel is happening here is uh, that the bureaucrats and uh, the uh, some of the elected ones, obviously you can tell that with the Snowbirds uh, debacle, uh, think that they're above a regular Albertans. And, and the regular Albertans are, they're not asking for a lot, they're not, uh, they're not officious, uh, they've been highly respectful of this whole pandemic requirements uh, to this date, but now people are starting to uh, see the weaknesses in uh, the uh, effective affecting the regulations going forward and uh, it's it's deeply frustrating and when the CFIB comes out with a report of 34,500 businesses that are probably going to be lost uh, there comes a point in time when people figuratively have nothing left to lose 
and uh, similar to some of the people that haul grain with me and others in Saskatchewan and Manitoba, uh, highly frustrated and uh, and this is you know not meant to be overly uh, officious, but uh, they figuratively have nothing left to lose. So people are starting to come out and just like the young couple that are, are managing this restaurant, they they want to make a living. They're not looking for a handout. They're, they they could be sitting at home taking their darn serve money, but no, they're having a valuable business here. They're providing a community asset. It, it, it's so marvelous. That's partly why I came here is to give them a personal uh, thumbs up and a pat on the back saying that this is who we are as Albertans. We want a job. We want to have our daily opportunities to go to work and uh, let's let's carry on. Uh, Chris, why don't you tell us what just happened there on the phone? So I received a call from my uh, my lawyer and he went over the, the hearing they had this afternoon. It was supposed to be later, but I guess they got it in early. Um, apparently, it should have been a quick and dirty in and out type thing, but um, they were in there for about three hours. Uh, the court took about an hour to make the decision. And uh, pres apparently the, the presiding judge, um, while sympathetic to, to, uh, to what was going on with me and my business, um, in the end, she ruled. Now, now, I don't know all the legal, legal jargon. It's still kind of a blur in my head. But apparently there's three stress tests that need to pass before they'll grant a injunction. Um, somehow... Uh, the ap application passed all three stress tests, even though our numbers are currently below what the government themselves says is uh, what, what we need to reopen. So I'm not sure how that happened, but I'm sure that they have a reason, and I'm sure I'm going to find out when I end up in front of the judge again. So they have an emergency injunction to close the restaurant, and it's gone before a judge. So are you going to close? No, I'm not. So you could be found in contempt and they could technically hold you indefinitely or until such time as restaurants reopen, which is Monday and today is Wednesday. Here's the kicker. For them to hold me in contempt, Alberta Health Services has to inform the court that I've breached the order and ask the court to have me arrested as their application states and uh, and thrown in jail. So. If Alberta Health Services thinks that it's worth me going to jail for the four days before they're going to reopen anyway, while our case numbers are below the threshold, I guess that's what they got to do. It's terrible that uh, we are currently, as a society, letting criminals out of jail because COVID is deadly, apparently, but we're willing to lock up restaurateurs. Yeah, that's, uh, that's bananas for sure. Now, Chris, the lawyer that we hired for you, he worked very late till last night and he worked all day to try to win this fight for you. Unfortunately, the judge ruled the other way, but we're still going to keep fighting. There's a lot of fight left in you and in us, and I think people from all over the world now are, are, are really going to rally around you and um, keep you fighting. Well, if, if Alberta Health Services and the government thinks that they've they've shaken me, like I'm shaking right now, but it's not because I'm scared. It's not because I'm nervous. It's because I'm friggin' livid. I am absolutely boiling inside that it actually got this far where the the government, my government that I voted for, is is willing to persecute me for something like this. It just, it's unbelievable. And And what I'm thinking, like, if these people can't stand up and, and stand up for me, for all these thousands of people that support us, maybe it's time that somebody took their place. Well, Chris, we're going to help you. We're going to make sure that you have all the legal help that you need at no cost to you. We want you to just worry about serving good food to even better customers. Um, and I know you've got a lot of worries um, on your heart right now and on your mind. Um, but do know that we will give you the full support that you need. Well, that uh, that that is very comforting. And, and another thing that gives me comfort is I can cook. So if I end up in prison <laughs> and I'm feeding my fellow inmates wonderful food, I'm pretty sure that I'll have all the cigars I need and books and whatever. So, yeah, I'm, I'm okay. The turnout here in Mirror, Alberta, to support Chris 
got and the whistle stop approached about 60 people in spite of the bitter minus 25 degree cold. But sadly, Chris lost in court today. However, he says he's vowing to fight on. Chris's lawyer, Chad Williamson, argued Chris's case for four hours in front of Court of Queen's Bench Justice Kendall in Red Deer. Now, Chad Williamson waged a ferocious defense, but the judge came down on the side of Alberta Health Services. So here's what that means. There's a temporary injunction granted today against the whistle stop. And Chris has been ordered to close. And if Chris doesn't close, he could be jailed in contempt of court. There will be AHS inspections going forward to make sure that Chris is closed. But when they get here, they are going to find out that the whistle stop is wide open to customers. The customers are staying and the staff say they are staying too. And I guess that means I'm staying too. Because this is about one man speaking up for an entire industry and for property rights. He's doing his best to save the entire restaurant industry from the government. And the government, well, they are trying to squash the rebellion that Chris has started. Now, if you'd like to help us help Chris Scott fight for survival against the full force of the Alberta health bureaucracy, please donate today at fightthefines.com. We're going to be with Chris and his family and his staff and his customers every step of the way, even if Chris lands in jail. For Rebel News, here in Mirror, Alberta, just finishing up an illegal club sandwich before I hit the road, I'm Sheila Gunreed. If you'd like to help us help Chris Scott and the Whistle Stop fight for the right to be an entrepreneur and for property rights and the right to protect his entire industry from the clutches of government, please donate today at fightthefines.com. Chris lost in court today, but he is vowing to stay open. That means serious repercussions for him, but he is unfazed and we're standing with him the entire way. Again, you can help us help Chris at fightthefines.com.